The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Several years back, there was a young man living in Israel. We'll give him a name. We'll call him Mati. Mati got himself in a heap of trouble. And rather than face his problems and deal with the situation, one fine day, this guy picked himself up and he disappeared. He was obviously running from the law. He just disappeared, didn't say a word to his parents, to his siblings, to his friends. He couldn't handle that which he was facing, and he skipped town. Rumor had it that he went to New York, but there was no proof, there was no trace, there was nothing to no whereabouts whatsoever. Months went by, then years. Mutti's older sister, Shoshana, was gravely concerned. Her parents were in poor health. They wanted to see their son, but nobody had a clue as to where he was. Shoshana decided, I'll go to the United States. I'll go to this New York. I'll find him. He's got to be somewhere. Her friend said, Shoshana, New York is a big place. It's not like a little town, a little kibbutz. It's New York. America's a big tr- country. You can't just go there and think you're going to find someone. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. But Shoshana missed her brother terribly, and she could no longer see the tears of her parents every single day. And so she went. She landed in New York stayed by a friend's house and realized that our friends in Israel were quite quite right. It's a big city. Where do you look? Where do you go? So she made this flyer with a picture of Mati, and she starts going to places where she's told Israelis hang out, hanging up flyers. She visits every restaurant she possibly could. She's hanging up pictures wherever she can, week after week, putting up photos of her brother. Nothing, nothing. After three weeks of this, she's feeling hopeless. And she makes plans to return home. She's dreading having to face her parents to say no clue of where Mati is. Before she was about to leave, the friend with whom she was staying had a connection to Chabad and said to Shoshana, you're here in New York anyway. You're leaving Sunday night. Sunday morning, go to Crown Heights. Go to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He sees anyone that will come see him. He gives them a blessing. You have an opportunity to ask a blessing of the Lubavitcher Rebbe to find your brother. You've done everything else. Go. She says, what does she have to lose? So she takes a cab to Crown Heights. She waits online like everyone else, stretching for a long, long way. And she's getting closer and closer and closer to standing in front of the tzaddik, to stand in front of the holy person, to beg for a blessing, some clue. How can she find her brother? And then her moment came. She's standing face to face to the Rebbe. She looks at the Rebbe and she tries to speak, but no words could come out of her mouth. Tears begin to come down from her eyes. She wants to explain her situation, but her voice just shut down. No words. The Rebbe gave her an understanding and fatherly look. And the Rebbe said this line to her. It is forbidden. It is absolutely forbidden for a Jew to give up hope. It is forbidden, it is absolutely forbidden for a Jew to give up hope. She left the building completely shaken up. She couldn't stop crying. She didn't say a word to the Rebbe, but the Rebbe said what she needed to hear. Don't give up hope. Don't give in. She already had spent three weeks, but now she needed to extend this visit. Don't give up hope. It is absolutely forbidden to give up hope. She calls for the car service to take her back to the friend's house where she was staying. And she's crying the entire time. The cab driver, the car service driver, happens to be an Israeli. So she begins to speak. To, he speaks to her in Hebrew. What's wrong? Why are you crying? She says, Mati, her brother, gives the whole story. He went to the Rebbe. It's forbidden to give up hope. And she tells this cab driver everything. She just pours out her heart. So the cab driver says, show me, show me the flyer. Show me the flyer. And she takes out the flyer and she shows it to him. And she says, this is your brother? I share a basement with him in Queens. Mati's your brother? And within an hour, brother and sister were reunited. And a few days later, son and parents are reunited. It is forbidden. It is absolutely forbidden for a Jew to give up hope. Rav Nachman of Breslov put it this way. Despair is not real. It's an illusion which has no true existence in reality. Feeling that your circumstances are hopeless is only a perception of your situation. It's not the reality of your situation. Enjoyed this story? 
Come again. Bring a friend. StoriesToInspire.org. <laughs>